The story of the rich man and Lazarus. Welcome to stewardship season. All right. The moral of this particular story is it's not that, that wealth is inherently bad, but the problem of this one particularly well-off man is that he suffers from something that afflicts all of us from time to time. And the condition is this. It's very scientific. I'll get around to that later, I guess. I think that's the... I looked it up in a, in a medical dictionary. It's a particular condition, and it turns out there are symptoms, and I, I read them in the medical dictionary. I'm pretty serious. Um, I'll get around to that later, I guess. They are as follows. Minor symptoms include, but are not limited to, overdue library books, Dishes in the sink, running out of clean underwear, coupled with overflowing clothes hampers, that kind of go hand in hand. Filing taxes on April 15th. That smell in your fridge of those old jars that got pushed to the back that you don't get around to, but in the meantime. Cramming for a geometry test between classes and being so busy that you forget to eat lunch. Serious symptoms include, but are not limited to, waiting until it's too late to pick up your kid at soccer practice, Ooh. running out of gas and being stuck on the side of the highway, not calling your mom for a few months, and could be deadly if tied to neglecting the deepest yearnings of your soul until it's too late. The man in today's story had a severe, deadly case of, I'll get around to that later, right? I never thought to go to his great physician. But who could blame the guy? He had what he thought he needed. Fine linen, check. Sumptuous feasts, check. If he ever thought about the commandments of Moses or the words of the prophets that tell us to meet our spiritual needs and the needs of others and not just our own physical needs. It was, all this was soon overcome by a flare-up of his, I'll get around to that later, right? This. But let's be honest. Who among us doesn't have at least a little bit of that condition? I know I do. Life is busy, life is complicated, there are many demands from many places to do many things. There aren't enough hours in the day, days in the week, weeks in the month, months in the year, or years in life for that matter, to get everything done. Could I help more? Sure. Do I never help or think I never need help like the man in today's story? That's what I'm working on. See, we're all working on it. We're all working on a, a little bit change. Changing our habits, changing how much we give to others, changing how much we give to our bodies, changing how much we give to our souls. The problem of the rich man is that he never even considered that he would have to change. He never thought even once that perhaps the man at his gate, Lazarus, all covered with sores and actively dying, could use more help than the licks the dogs gave him. The man didn't think even once that he, perhaps he could at least give Lazarus what fell off his table. And if he ever did think about it, he spent every day of his life thinking perhaps he would get around to it later. All right, so what does all this have to do with, with stewardship at church? Here it is. The main goal of the church, more than our amazing social ministries, more than a community of Christian fellowship, more than the opportunities to learn and grow in faith. All important, but more than all that. It 
It's to give you an opportunity to experience the grace and love and forgiveness of God. As God comes near to us, physically, here, to us, in word and sacrament. I know. We all know. Life is busy. Life is complicated. There are many demands from many places to do many things. There aren't, there aren't enough hours in the day, days in the week, weeks in the month, months in the year, years in our life to get everything done. From moderate to severe, we, we all suffer from, I'll get around to that later, I guess. But when you do get around to it, when you, when you come to this place we call St. Timothy because you need to experience forgiveness, love, and grace of God and word and sacrament, whether once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year, we want to be here for you. Supporting this church with our time, talent, with our treasure, Make sure that St. Timothy is always here for you. And that it's here for everyone else, too. Because like all of us, we might not know exactly when and exactly how much we truly need it. I've told this story before, um, a couple years ago. But I want to tell it again. And this story is actually not mine. It's from one of our members. His name is Dave Catchby. And back when he was a teenager, Dave met a family who was on a road trip and happened to walk into his church one afternoon because in that moment, they needed it. They needed a place full of God's love, grace, and forgiveness and they knew that in this world, you can't find those things just anywhere. You see, this family was driving home from vacation, and as they were driving, they, they narrowly escaped getting in a, a horrific accident. And everyone was, was really shaken up in the car. The parents were really shaken up, especially. They, they realized that the worst had almost happened. And in that moment, it, it dawned on them that they never had their son baptized. And so they, they, they took the first exit off the interstate and found the nearest town and the closest church. And it was the, the Lutheran church that Dave attended growing up. And Dave happened to be uh, the, the youth group was meeting that day. And his pastor comes and asks to, to see Dave in, in the sanctuary. So Dave goes. He walks into the sanctuary, and there, already standing around the baptismal font, is this family and the pastor. And the pastor asks Dave to stand in as a, a baptismal sponsor for the son. Just like that, the, the son was baptized, washed with the power of that forgiveness, love, and grace, and after that, the family drove off. That, that's the reason we give to the church. We, we give because we never know when we will truly need it. Perhaps more importantly, we give because we never know when, when someone else truly needs it too. That person who needs to hear the words that we don't hear much, if at all, in the world these days. You're forgiving. That person who needs to hear the words that we don't hear much in the world these days. You are loved, not because of what you do, but because you are who you are. A person who needs to hear the words that we don't hear much in the world these days, grace is real and God is here 
tangibly. The reason we give is actually a spiritual reason. We are building a, a spiritual home for when our spirit needs fed. So growing up, I, I also told this story too. It's a day of readings. Growing up, my family, we used to, we went to church all the time. And some Sundays, much to my distress, especially as a teenager, oh my gosh, we had, for, for one reason or another, we had to go to more than one service that day. And in a joking way, my parents would say, I just, just think of it like a little bit of extra credit. <laughs> That's a great line. And they said it as a joke, knowing full well that going to church isn't some sort of a point system. We don't get some sort of perfect attendance award from God. What we do get from God is an invitation to come and grow. Come and grow in ways that the rich man in today's story never thought he needed till it was too late. This spiritual growth is called the life of faith. And this life of faith comes in fits and starts, like all things in life. A life of faith is not some sort of upward, unending climb to nirvana. The Christian life of faith is a way. Bebs, and flows. The great Lutheran theologian, pastor, and martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer said that, that church is the place where we sit with people in their highest heavens and in their lowest heavens. Highest heavens, lowest heavens, ebbs and flows, the life of faith, whatever you want to call it. And when these ups and downs happen, what, when life does what life inevitably always does, the church will be here. And that's, that's why we give. We give because when our world changes, you can count on the church being here for you. And for others with the words, we sooner or later all need to hear God's words. You are forgiven. You are loved. God's grace is real. And it's here. Amen.